but the reason why we're so excited is because this is really a journey about um, getting acknowledged, getting industry Cisco acknowledgement for everything you've been doing with Cisco APIs. We have been talking about the Cisco certifications uh, for, for DevNet and the partner specialization is something that requires the certifications and also a software practice. Now, this is for Cisco partners that are large, medium, and even for startups who haven't worked with Cisco traditionally, but who want to work with Cisco APIs. So stay tuned. We have a lot of great insights. And like I've been saying all along, make sure you take notes. Um, these are you know, leaders from our Cisco, our partners who have made the time to really share a lot of their, their the secrets to their success. And um, if you know if you're not as that far along yet to have a DevNet specialization, talk to your account manager, talk to um, folks in in your country who um, can can get you connected with DevNet. For example, uh, we have um, an enterprise networking hackathon. It's a virtual hackathon that is happening. It's just for partners in the Americas. But like I said, if you're not in the Americas, make sure you talk to your account manager. So for those of you who are in the U.S., Canada, and Latin America, check out. Cisco enhack.devpost.com. Um, there is a virtual hackathon taking place, so make sure you go and check that out. And for everyone else, stay tuned and make sure you take notes. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us to talk today about the new DevNet specialization we just launched for our partners. I'm pleased to be joined today with, uh, I'm here with Chuck Stickney and Chloe Kaufman to discuss this specialization, give you a little more details about what we're attempting to do. Yeah, thanks, Brian. As you mentioned, we're here to talk about the new DevNet specialization for partners. And this is a program that we're releasing that is meant to recognize our partners today that have and are using software practices to deliver automation and programmability capabilities on top of the Cisco products and tool sets. Um, as it's a specialization, Brian, can you talk more to our audience about why specializations are important and how that benefits our partners and our ecosystem today? Yeah, I can. Thanks. One of the things we want to talk about at a higher level is just the importance of our competency programs in general. What we think about at Cisco is how do we make sure that we can help our partners really showcase the unique value that they bring to customers uh, in a way and show up in the market uh, and really reflect what they can do. So we built an entire competency portfolio. The core of that is our specialization programs. We started out years ago really focusing on technology, but lately we've been moving more into business specializations. And so as I've been working with uh, Chuck and Chloe on this new DevNet specialization, we really wanted to focus on how that um, entire business process uh, was happening within the specializations. And I'd love to bring it back, Brian, to why we really did this in the first place. And this has to do with what we saw our customers really needing. So we spent a lot of time talking to our partners, talking to our customers, um, talking to the field to, to understand where the needs are and where the skill set need is for this competency program to even exist. And, you know, as we've seen, digital transformation is, is the buzzword and it's key. Um, but what's happening is we need our customers our customers need to be able to make informed decisions faster and to be agile and they need to do these make these decisions and do these deployments um, in a secure manner and we're seeing our it environments becoming growing in complexity that's just the the facts and the way that it is so this programmability and devops skill set is really key for this customization of solutions for integration and for this automation at scale um, and that's really what our customers are seeing the need for for our partners to be able to help them to deliver so brian how how can our customers feel confident that they are working with the right partners who have this skill set I, I think that's a great point and i love thinking about this from a customer lens and and what they're looking for whenever we have a partner who achieves a specialization uh, from Cisco, one of the things that the customers really care about is does that designation reflect the skill that that partner has? And programs like the DevNet specialization that we just designed comes with an intense level and, and a rigorous process. And what that rigor does is while it makes it difficult for some partners to achieve that level, 
if you become, for example, an advanced DevNet specialized partner, because you've been through that rigor, because you've been through an audit that's been hosted by a third party, what that does is it, it gives you not only the confidence in your own skill set to go out into the market, but when customers see that designation, they know that that partner has been through something special and that is not a badge that just anyone can earn. So the rigor of the program actually brings a lot of value with that, both for the partner who's looking to bring it into the market, but again, when the customers are looking for a partner and who they wanna work with, they wanna make sure that the partners actually have the skills um, and have been tested. So the rigor of the program is absolutely critical to what we're trying to do. And, and you know, Brian, you're, you're mentioning the word partner quite a bit. So I wanna touch in a little bit on who the, our partners that we're saying uh, can achieve this designation are. So, you know, when we sat back in the room, uh, you know, six months ago defining this program, and this did not happen overnight. It's, it's probably been over years in the making, really, when we talk about this programmability and APIs being baked into our Cisco portfolio. Um, but when we sat in that room, we had, we had people coming to the table from different parts of Cisco and from different experience levels um, who were able to identify that, you know, our, our partners are transforming, our traditional channel partners are transforming. They are learning how to use the programmability on top of our networks to be able to deliver this new kind of network. But on top of that, we're seeing these software, independent software house entities who don't necessarily have this um, uh, longstanding relationship with Cisco, have this skill set to bring to the table. And this is beneficial for our customers to be able to have breadth in the choices of, of um, folks to help deliver the solutions that they need, but it's also valuable for our ecosystem of partners to be able to work together in new ways that they haven't traditionally worked in the past. Let's have a value-added reseller partner with an independent software vendor to deliver the solution that's needed for our customer. So this program is, is open to a whole wide range of folks who can deliver, you know, can meet the skill set requirement, which we think will bring tremendous value both to our partner ecosystem as well as our customer ecosystem. So Chuck, I would love for you to talk about more about the program requirements in terms of, you know, that skill set that's actually needed and who are the folks at these companies who are who are have this skill set and what they can do to achieve this. Yeah, absolutely, Chloe. So, Brian, you mentioned a lot about the rigor associated with these programs. Let's dive a little bit deeper into, into what we think some of that rigor is. So, you, you mentioned the partner programs that we have. So, whether it's a technology, specializa or it's technology specialization or other business specializations, we always at Cisco ground those in the Cisco certifications that we have. And very recently, we've released what we call our DevNet certification. So, that's kind of an industry first as far as recognizing software programmability capabilities for the networking space. The Cisco DevNet certification is really tied to that. We do require that uh, certified partners have DevNet certified individuals in, inside of the program for the specialization program. But because this is a business program, we're not just looking at the techie component of it. We, we of course, expect and, and encourage you to have very strong technical talent on your bench to be able to deliver these outcomes. But we also look at the business process associated with this. We define business roles that you have to have where it relates to the person that's responsible for defining what your actual strategy is for delivering software and automation services to your customers, how you handle the go-to-market aspect of it. So the, the person that's responsible for being able to help you define your strategy to get this into the market so your customers know about it and those, those customers can, can realize the value and the benefits and you as a partner can realize the business growth associated with that. And very importantly, we also look at the customer support practice. And there's the three business roles that we really tie into. The person responsible for defining the strategy for the, the software practice itself, the person responsible for defining how you bring those services to market, and the person responsible for defining how you support your customers that use the value added services that you build on top of that. Uh, and Brian, with that, can you kind of talk about how those requirements tie to some of the other business practices that we have or the other specialization programs that we have today? I think that's a, um, that's a, it's a good point. So earlier I talked about how traditionally we tied a lot of our specializations to our technology or our architectures. When we started building out these new business specializations, uh, we started thinking about how do we evaluate the partner's entire practice? And it's more than just the individual knowledge. And, and so Chuck, I, I love how you outlined the roles 
um, and really start to touch on the process. But what's critical with our business specializations is that we've, we understand how that knowledge is actually working within your entire organization and driving a full practice forward. Um, so again, it's more than just going and getting a couple individual certif certified individuals to have on a partner team and then claim that they have this specialization. We really want to see how, how does this manifest itself within your software practice? Um, and again, being from global partner organization, I didn't come into this as a expert on DevNet or software development, um, but you guys are. Can you can maybe check out, bring it back to you. How, how do you take the knowledge and some of that process and really see what was that gonna look like across the partner's um, true software development practice? Yes, absolutely, and you're right. That yeah, Chloe mentioned, you know, we're, we're locked in this room, sequestered for you know, six months ago, defining what the rigor of this program is. We really spent a lot of time focusing on exactly that process. Uh, from a software development methodology process perspective, we want to make sure that our specialized partners have a solid practice for gaining custom requirements, for doing code revision controls. So, as we know in the networking space, you go, you service one customer, you move on to three others, you may have forgotten what you did for that other customer, making sure that you have good documentation and, and, and historical records of what you did there. So when that customer calls you back, you know where to go back to, to be able to help that. Uh, it's that support process piece that's that's very critical that to that as well. So as I mentioned, for having that strategy lead there, having someone that is actually responsible for defining what the software program or the support program really is, that that that's critical for us because that ensures that uh, the customers that we go to market together to serve, they're left in a solid position that they're not. You know, they know they have a mechanism for support. And as I talk about go to market, you know, that, that's a, we believe that's important for the partners to be able to have a strategy to actually deliver these services to the market. But we think it's also a benefit to the customers that they know that they're talking to a partner that doesn't just have the ability to, to tell a flowery story, but actually has the ability to, to deliver those services so that the customer can take advantage of that. And how that software is built and packaged, that really becomes the true nuts and bolts of the process that's there. Uh, as we talk about software development, you know, having an agile type of process that you know, we, we take customer requirements, we do peer reviews, we do testing, and then we do the deployment to the customers, that type of process methodology helps to minimize the amount of customer support challenges that come up in the future. Um, but as those come to bear, as we, as we talk about these capabilities that are there, Chloe, I'm wondering if you've got some examples where we can talk about how partners are using these capabilities to today and delivering these outcomes to our customers right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a great example, and I think the example really brings it to light, you know, what, what we're seeing and what we want to see more of. Um, so there's this, Cisco has a, a, a partner, a gold partner um, called C CAE, who's based in the UK. Um, and their leadership team has this mindset. So I met with their account team. We talked a little bit about the solution that they delivered. And they had this mindset to automate anything that can be automated. And I just, I love that quote. I think that is just so encompassing of what, what the shift of mindset that we actually really want to see. Um, but the idea was they needed to do this, this um, rapid branch deployment rollout of Meraki devices um, across you know, thousands of stores, essentially, in the UK. Um, they were up against a, com a competitor. There were some requirements that, that Meraki's dashboard didn't meet out of the box. And uh, so they went off and created this custom dashboard that allowed for this um, provisioning of devices to happen so that at the actual onsite, the devices could be provisioned in 30 seconds. So there's a custom app, gets scanned in, done in 30 seconds. Not only was it a, a rapid amount of time that this that they were able to do these uh, provisioning devices, but also they were it allowed for them to have lower skilled workers to actually be on site to do this deployment. So they could not be you know restricted based on the skill set that was required to actually be on site at the branches. Um, the estimation of time that they saved was 180 days to be able to do this rapid branch rollout. So there's a benefit on this partner side that they won the deal and they were able to deliver this in an automated mechanism. And additionally, they have an app now that's 80% reusable essentially to be able to offer that same service to other customers. The customer benefited because they were able to have this rapid branch rollout and they were able to see and realize um, this new upgraded 
equipment delivered you know through the great portfolio that Meraki has to offer so now they can do the next steps of analyzing that data you know seeing what they can do with the actual Meraki uh, infrastructure that they have in house now that they've done that um, deployment so that's the kind of stuff that we want to see it's amazing our customers are benefiting our partners are benefiting um, and you know it's 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 really awesome we get super we geek out about it so um, but so so with that though you know we have these customers or these partners that are delivering this so Chuck how do they go about finding our customers to find these kind of partners who can deliver these solutions. Yeah, exactly. And Chloe, I think with the type of story that that we have with the CA use case, we, we have to imagine there are many partners saying, "Hey, yeah, I, I want to find a partner that can," help, or many customers that want to find a partner that can help them deliver those services. And from a Cisco perspective, we have many mechanisms that, that that help our customers find this. As Brian mentioned, this is part the specialization is part of our overall global partner organization programs. And we've had longstanding tools that we call partner locator. So you can use that based on your geography. You can find a partner that's associated with you, search for partners that, are, that have the DevNet specialization badge. And that becomes a quick mechanism for you to find partners that you can work with today. Beyond that, the partner locator will link to what we call our ecosystem exchange inside of DevNet. And that becomes a place where, those, where the partners themselves can put marketing material on there. So the types of uh, offers that they have, uh, they can describe their software practice. They can link to the types of community uh, contributions they make into the DevNet ecosystem, whether it's in our code exchange or automation exchange. So prospective customers and even other partners that want to do a partner to partner integration, they can use uh, the developer, uh, the, 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 the DevNet ecosystem exchange to be able to find those resources and find those partners that can participate in that program to be able to help those customers move forward. Uh, Brian, anything you want to add on that as far as you know, kind of the integration of those partners and, and how we can leverage this to make sure that our partners have the opportunity to be successful with DevNet and Cisco moving forward? So I, I think that's a, you know, it's, it's a good summary there, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, talking about that, but the, the critical component on top of just the DevNet specialization um, is that as our customers are looking for partners, the, the breadth of their experience and knowledge is going to count as well. So if they're looking for a solution, for example, um, within our networking portfolio, they're looking to find a partner that can automate their network or, or roll out some, um, some new solutions to really help them take advantage of a certain aspect of their business, they can look at combining um, or look for partners with experience with the DevNet specialization, but then perhaps one of our other architecture specializations or even our customer express specialization. So um, being able to fine tune some of those searches and see partners who have these complementary skills that you're looking for, that's going to be really important too from a customer lens. And then from a partner lens, um, really looking at what does Cisco have in the portfolio available. So if you start with the DevNet experience and software development, you're doing that on top of some kind of solution. So look to maybe some other programs that we have um, that will really complement what you're doing within DevNet. And again, it comes back to what is that unique value um, that a partner can bring to the market and what can Cisco do to help shine a light on that? That's really, for me, um, where the power of the comp kind of combining these programs comes into play. And, and the tools that you were talking about, Chuck, are the exact ways that, that people, that uh, partners can find other partners or customers can find partners to really uh, find those with the skills that they want to work with in the future. That, that's fantastic, Brian. And kind of wrapping up or starting to wrap up here as we you kind of as a call to action for the partners that are in the audience here that you've heard about this program. You've understood the value of what it means to the entire partner program ecosystem inside of Cisco. You've heard some great customer examples. Where do I start next? What do I do? Kind of the path that we, we, we encourage our partners to take is you know, learn about DevNet and start, start your education process. On, on the developer portal today, we have tons of resources that are freely available that can start you down the journey to learn where to find those. And you, you can find those at developer.cisco.com slash start now is a great place to be able to, to, to learn what learn how to start and, and find some freely available labs and opportunities to start learning. As you, as you go down that learning process, it, we mentioned you, you, we do require certifications. The DevNet certification pro program is available. You can find access to that on the developer portal as well. And then 
as you as you develop that practice, you have the individuals that are there. You, you, you've started your go to market. You can go. You can learn about the details of our partnership program at developer.cisco.com/partner. All the details associated with this specialization program are there, with instructions on how you access the the global partner organization systems to be able to apply for this specialization. Um, you know, Chuck, a bunch of great resources that you just just shared. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to make sure that they spend a little bit of time checking out those links. Um, but with that, I just want to close it out. And you know, on behalf of everyone here, we just want to say thank you for spending the time with us. Um, I also want to say thank you for our partnership with the Global Partner Organization, Brian and team um, with DevNet to really to be able to del deliver this program. Um, we're very excited about it, but even more, we're super excited to see what all of our partners are going to do for our customers. So with that, thank you. That was really, really good to hear from the crew who built the DevNet specialization for partners. And we asked them to give us as many details as possible because we get so many questions. People have heard about it, people saw the launch, but now that it's live, now that people can apply for the DevNet specialization, those are the folks. So if you didn't get their, um, their information, make sure you go back and, and find Chloe Kaufman and Chuck Stickney and the team in the Cisco Partners organization, because this is happening now. If you're a Cisco partner of any size or if you're a startup, who you know you think you could build a software practice using cisco apis these are the people to know so now we're going to go into interviews with companies who have already achieved the devnet specialization for partners now some of these names may be familiar we're going to first hear from reddit presidio and you heard um just a little bit um ago you heard from um another presidio partner we, we heard from jeff levin sailor so again this is going back to how we have had a lot of people involved in the community all along, but now we have the DevNet certifications and the DevNet specialization for partners. So we really want to make sure that um, you know you're following along. And if you have any questions, let us know. And make sure that you're following the Cisco Partners channels. We're also streaming there. So let's see. We're ready to go, and we're going to hear from Brad at Presidio. Excited to get to see Brad. Brad, how are you? Hi, Sylvia. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm, I'm super happy that you can be part of DevNet Day. Really excited that you've been at the forefront, really, of getting ready for the DevNet specialization for partners. So um, thank you so much for being here. And let's talk about what customers are looking for in terms of programmability and automation and how you have been helping them up until now. Sure. I, I think uh, a lot of this starts with, you know, customers who are uh, migrating to cloud or cloud-like environments. They're, they're finding that things um, are becoming more and more software-defined. You know, it used to be just a buzzword, but I think there's a little bit more meat behind that now, and it actually has more meaning. So as part of that, you know, customers want to be able to automate the deployment of applications, and applications really become a first class citizen finally, you know, after all these years, you know, as you know, with Cisco ACI, when it first came to market market with the application centric uh, networking, you know, I think we're finally at a point where there's some meaning behind what that is, you know, we're rationalizing applications for customers, helping them understand what they have, and then bringing automation to the forefront to help bring those applications to their customers. So it's become real and that means real pain points real needs so um you know it's not just about hey i'm part of the developer community but this is about the business so um what are you seeing are those main pain points um well you know as as customers you know bring these things to market their applications um need to become very highly available you know they already are but you know the business the businesses are really pushing their IT organizations to be more centered around bringing new features and functionality to their customers. So as part of that, keeping the lights on isn't enough anymore. They've got to be able to be more agile, be more consistent and reliable with what they're releasing and be able to bring new things to market. So th those are the challenges that, that our customers are having in you know, automation and programmability really just are the foundational 
parts of that, they sit underneath those applications and, and make sure that they're able to be um, brought to market in a much more uh, quick and agile manner. So Brad, you've been a member of the DevNet community for a long time. Your team, you got the certifications. How did you take it the next step to say, hmm, we really want to get started with this DevNet specialization with partners. I mean, no one has that yet. And you're thinking, we want to go for it. What, what do you think that it's going to help you do for your customers better if you have this definite specialization for partners? Sure, sure, that's a great question. I mean, I, I think, you know, as soon as that uh, initial blog article came out that announced it, you know, we, we were very excited about that uh, just because it was, it was validating, you know, where we saw the industry is heading and what our customers were asking for. And, um, you know, a lot of the work that we've been doing already has had programmability and automation behind the scenes to help our customers. And that is giving us the opportunity to take that more as a front focused offering to our customers. So what advice would you have for other partners who want to go through this process? And, you know, within the community, would you consider partnering with other Cisco partners to build something that, that Cisco hasn't built before using Cisco APIs and everything you've learned in your certification and specialization journey. Cisco's done a great job of creating a nice foundation with the certification path. The DevNet certification path really is a great starting point for any organization. It helps kind of validate the individuals within the organization and give them, you know, a bit of a, a badge, so to speak, uh, you know, like, hey, I can do this. And as organizations become more mature, they can look within their, their teams and their organizations to see who's actually doing this. You know, partners might be surprised to find that there is a lot of this already happening within their organization. We just need to build some um, structure around that. So I'd say the whole DevNet uh, team has been great. And, you know, we've been, um, you know, following along uh, the journey from the beginning, I think, and, you know, Susie Wee has done a fantastic job of, of bringing everyone together and getting them excited about what's possible. And, you know, I, you know, there are, uh, others within the organization, like, um, uh, Chuck Stickney, who's really, I think, put the structure behind the program and, you know, in general, I just, you know, the, the entire, the entire community and all the content that's been created is incredible. You know, we have so much, uh, content available up on DevNet now to help in the, you know, people on our team to, to gain the, these types of skills. Um, all the people who are creating that content, I think really need, they deserve a big shout out. It's great. Thank you so much for being part of this journey that DevNet has been on. And, uh, and for sharing with us what it means to your business. Congratulations on your DevNet partner specialization. DevNet specialization for partners. Welcome. Thank you so much, Sylvia. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So it's really great to hear from people who have been working so hard and are finally getting this recognition. Now, the really cool thing about doing DevNet Day online is that it's not just an event in the United States. We were supposed to go to Las Vegas this year, but now we're, we're doing the DevNet Zone live. We are having so many people join us globally. So next we're going to hear from a partner in Sweden, Miradot, and we even got some, some DevNet fan mail from the team in Sweden. They have been so eager to lead the way in automation. So a big shout out to, to the team there, Annika, Ellen, Sarah. So um, let's hear now from Miradot. And I want you to pay attention closely because this is an example of a company that is very much, it's a startup, but they, they, have, they may have smaller numbers, but they have a high percentage of expertise. So um, you will hear from Miradot CEO talk about why it was important for them to train their workforce and how they are helping customers now that they have um, not only the knowledge, but the, the certifications and um, this recognition from Cisco. So let's roll the video of our interview with Marcus from Meridad. And we continue with more information about our wonderful partners. Now we're going to talk to Marcus Lynn. So you had a really ambitious goal. The DevNet certifications hadn't launched yet, and you said you were going to get 
everyone in your team DevNet certified? And did you all make it under the DevNet 500? All five of us was, uh, man managed to do the certifications in time and included in the DevNet 500. So very proud of that. Very good, very good. We're so happy to hear it and congratulations for that. Now let's get back to why you're doing this. Um, what are customers looking for in terms of automation and programmability? So most of them are investing in new platforms and new technologies. Thing is, those platforms can either be run like before with a CLI or a GUI, the way it always has worked, or they can be run with APIs or automation tools like uh, Ansible or Terraform. They chose the platform with this in mind, but often get stuck with the CLI or clicking around in the GUI. The engineers have started to learn Python or gotten quite far on this, but it's still a long way from there to getting a fully automated infrastructure. They know that they are on the right path and what the goal is, but getting there is hard. What's the steps? How do you align the network automation with the server automation? How do you tie the infra automation into the application rollouts? So these are the answers that our customers are looking for. The bits of pieces are already there, but laying the puzzle has all, all, all begun. So how is your software practice helping with all of those challenges and all of those needs? We help them laying the puzzle. We use our experience and skills to step-by-step step getting their bits and pieces uh, to fit together. We develop the software that makes the, sure that the network is there when the service is, server is provisioned. We relieve the customer from having the discrepancies between the documentation and the reality by making the documentation system the source of truth so that the provisioning is done from the documentation itself. Um, so the main pain point that we see is that they want to automate and get going, but the data tasks are taking up all available resources. As we help them, they start to free up some time and they can start putting in some real effort into the automation uh, work themselves. Um, they start working alongside with us, taking over the automation projects and becoming more and more independent. And by doing that, we are able to start helping the next customer. It's quite a beautiful system. It, it sounds like you're saving people time. You you're really want to get them to be more efficient. How will the DevNet specialization help you help customers even more? One thing that we would able to do with um, the DevNet specialized partners to team up with them. Uh, we're small and yet we want to deliver to larger companies, of course. Uh, so as we see it, no one can be best at everything, but every, everyone can be best at something. So to put it on, in Cisco terms, we own our edge. Uh, by looking who has the DevNet specialization, we know when someone else is, is owning their edge and can leverage that by teaming up and deliver even more. I think that's even a hashtag, own your edge. I'll have to ask Oliver. I'm pretty sure he's used it. And it, and it was even you know big on screen at Partner Summit. So that's right. I'm glad to know you're owning your edge. And what advice do you have for other companies that would like to own their edge? Um, I'd like to think that a small focus group with a high skill set instead of a large broad team has a better aim and can keep the knowledge sharing quite tight. Um, and also to make sure that uh, to bring in both programming folks and some more infra-focused people on the team to cover the journey from both ends. Uh, also, I'd recommend to talk to your local Cisco team uh, where uh, I, perhaps someone has taken the certifications in order to get some tips and tricks around what training to use and mat what material to use. So what do you see as the main benefits of applying for the DevNet specialization? There's a uh, hundred ways of reaching the same goal when building automation and software. Uh, half of them might be bad. What really matters for the customer is quality and delivery time. And with this DevNet specialization, uh, you can be certain that you have the processes and skills needed to deliver quality on time, every time. Um, second thing is that one of our main challenges as a small company has always been proving our trustworthiness. Uh, we are small and yet not known by everyone in the business. business. Uh, by getting this stamp of approval from Cisco, we overcome this, which together with our customer success stories builds a foundation for gaining new customers' trust. Third thing is, by getting the recognition, our ability to attract talent grows. Talent, you definitely already have on the team because um, you know, you've done so much, even since the last time we spoke when the DevNet certifications hadn't launched yet, now they've launched. So how do you see the, what your team now has to offer because of the DevNet certifications? helping your customers even more? 
Um, so each individual in our team has been able to focus their attention where one has deepened their skills in DevOps and infrastructure as code, another one has spoken primarily on data center APIs for ACI and UCS and Intersight, for example, uh, with a clear learning path that fits their own interests that makes us able to together deliver a complete suit for bringing the automation to our customers. I'm, I'm so glad you're helping so many people. And if you could let us know who from the Cisco side helped you, you know, when you were going through this process to get ready for the certifications, to get ready for the specialization, anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, well, of course, Shastikni has done a fantastic job guiding us through the certifications, making sure that we have all the materials that we need. Uh, and also Sarah Wilburski and Eleni and Mark, the Swedish team, they're always there supporting us to perform even better and faster every time. Wonderful team. Thank you to, to everyone who's worked together you know, on the Cisco side to help our partners be successful, particularly Meridot. And congratulations on your DevNet specialization for partners. Thanks a lot. Means a lot to too. So exciting. I got to tell you, I'm looking at uh, people sharing on, uh, on social media, and they're taking so much pride in seeing their company having achieved this milestone, the DevNet specialization for partners, it's something new. And um, it's really neat to be among the first companies to have achieved this. Now, if we go back to about an hour ago, we heard from um, Joel King from WWT. That is a, a partner that you will be very familiar with if you've come to the DevNet zone, if you've come to DevNet Create. They've had booths, they've had demos. So uh, we're super excited to see them go through this process and get the DevNet specialization as well. Now, what I want you to pay attention to during this interview with Mark is um, how he invests in his people. Um, in a big company, there can be people who may want to innovate, but um, they might be doing it alone. So listen to his story and think about in your company, are you making it easy for people to find other people who are innovating or do folks for some reason feel like they have to do it alone? Um, so find those pockets of innovation, bring them together, and yes, we've been hearing a lot about how partners help customers, but it's so important also to invest in your people. And that's one of the things I'm really excited about in this next interview. So if you're watching, uh, please make sure that you're um, you know, sharing any screenshots or any, any video with um, at Cisco Partners, because we are streaming from the partner channels as well. And of course, keep using that hashtag DevNet Day. So let's, let's hear, hear from Mark at WWT. Thanks so much for joining us. How are you? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm having fun. It's DevNet Day, so special. And I see you have a special shirt on. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and again, thanks for uh, thanks for having me here. So the the, the shirts that we made uh, is really around you know this kind of idea of, about not being a cone. So it's really all about a passion for learning about sort of the evolution and in, in skill sets and, and, and really embracing programmability, automation, thinking about different ways to solve problems from, from that type of mindset. I know that the number one thing you want to do is help customers. So if we're speak, talking about reskilling and not being stuck in your ways, trying new things, let us know how customers are you know, reaching out to you when it comes to programmability and automation. We get a lot of ask on like, hey, how do I help uh, create self-service and provide a better IT service to my customers? How do I help better serve ourselves as a team? Um, you know, we, we have a term called like, let's, let, you know, down with toil, right? So how do we make uh, work fun and exciting again by giving, uh, you know, creating buttons to push that allow us to do our job more easily and effectively and helping our customers really do the same? So it sounds like your software practice is already helping customers, which is awesome. Now, with the DevNet Partner Specialization, or DevNet Specialization for Partners, how can you help customers even more? Yeah, I, the, the DevNet Partner Specialization is perfect for one, for us to have somewhat of a guiding light to help continually evolve, right? It's it, no matter how uh, good or whatever level you think you're at, you can always look back and improve it. So this helps us sort of 
uh, align a lot of our efforts around programmability, around automation, around software, and kind of really put it to practice. So it's really going to allow us to really uh, focus in on some core areas immediately. And I know for us, we're really excited on some of the enterprise networking and, and the data center networking is really going to be a big focus for us and our customers here going forward. So there's some immediate opportunity to really help do a lot of cool, interesting labs and, and some of the trainings and enablement things that we've done for ourselves through the program and really help our customers take those concepts and apply it to their business to help them move forward. And then candidly, having the certification really allows us to show um, back to our uh, customers as well as the broader community, like, hey, we, uh, we have the capability to help you uh, transform where you wanna go. How many folks from your company got the DevNet certification and got into the DevNet 500? Yeah, no, I, I would say that the first round of when we went through the, the certification for the DevNet 500, we had uh, nine individuals on the team uh, go ahead and pass that. So we were super excited to be able to have that opportunity to be a part of it. Um, and it's really caught on like wildfire. We, we've shown this to customers. We've brought in other uh, various uh, teams. We've had sales internally involved. We've had uh, um, professional services. Uh, we've had you know the engineering teams, internal IT. Really, everybody has just been wanting to be a part of um, this really kind of movement that we've been driving. So we've been uh, very fortunate to have nine out of nine pass the first round of it. And now we have a good amount of the professional certifications as well um, knocked out. So, so super excited to be able to, to evangelize that. So you have been really organized from the very beginning. You knew you were going for these certifications before they went live. What advice would you have for other companies that want to get organized and, and you know, be successful as well? Um, I think the best thing, obviously, is, is really look to the DevNet community. Um, if you look at, you know, the, obviously the DevNet site and, and the platform there, there's a lot of great resources, but really the, the, the passion that the broader community, the user base has, uh, is probably the most exciting thing. You know, as you're leveraging these things, it's really important to have uh, an environment to really learn in. So highly encourage people to, you know, leverage those sandboxes, leverage those labs, because, you know, absolutely understanding the concepts is, is, is very important and key. Taking sort of a real world hands-on keyboard type experience is really gonna make um, up-level your skills, not only for the certification, but uh, for you to be able to apply that, um, you know, in your sort of day-to-day -day, uh, uh, work environment as well. A big area of success that we're already seeing is within our um, uh, is within our professional services organization. So if you look at us as almost kind of our own customer, we're leveraging uh, sort of the, the the programmability and automation concepts we're learning to be able to deploy our customers' infrastructure even faster. Then the idea is to take it a step further and show our customers and say, "Hey, I'm going to show you how to deploy an ACI fabric." Uh, via automation, or I'm going to show you how to um, leverage programmability and APIs to upgrade, you know, your switching environment. So that way, it's not just one at a time and you pull out Notepad and you paste it in. Everybody's done that. But we can help encourage them by showing them how sort of we're evolving as, a, as an organization to do our job better and helping customers say, hey, you can solve a lot of these problems, these sort of mundane type tasks by leveraging the skills you're learning in, in the DevNet uh, certification program to solve real world problems. Um, and I would say one of the biggest areas that's bubbling up is I, I, I want better control over my uh, infrastructure um, from a higher level. And through automation, through APIs, through leveraging more software, you don't have to individually manage uh, specific environments and things. So you have much better control, much better security, and it's much more efficient um, to be able to, to, to run with that. And the joke I always make is your goal, if you're in IT during a change window, is you should push a button, make your changes, and then sit there and watch Netflix while you're waiting for the teams to test and validate. So if you can accomplish that through automation, then you've done your job really well. So that's a very clear goal. I like that. Um, what are your immediate goals for how the DevNet specialization for partners could help you do even more of that? Yeah, so one, it's really going to allow us to 
um, again, kind of do more with less. So instead of having to be on site, instead of having to help our customers with specific point solutions and products, we can actually help our customers um, do better integration across uh, multiple areas. So if I have you know, a collaboration team and a data center team and, and more of a, a WAN type uh, management team, we can better provide means to help them uh, leverage their day-to-day -day operations and help make um, you know, moving through their environment. So many of our customers, and, and I've, I've been, I was in IT for a long time, have sort of really great projects, but they're, they're caught up in the day-to-day -day firefighting of, I have an outage here, I have another, I got 50 tickets coming in that I have to deal with, and I'm not able to sort of spend time on those uh, you know, strategic initiatives that you're looking at. What we're seeing is you not only gain sort of speed and, and you know agility, if you will, by, by leveraging automation, but a big thing is you can reduce risk. So leveraging APIs, leveraging automation, right, it allows you to reduce the number of fat fingerings and accidental uh, you know, typos on, on command line and things like that and really reduces that sort of burden that you have to, you know, put out fires and then really focus your energy on the things that really matter and are really exciting to your organization. So uh, really that sort of reducing risk and as well as spending the time on the important things is what's really uh, uh, we're looking forward to helping more and more customers with through these certifications in this program. That makes a lot of sense. If it's something that needs to be done the same way every time, why not automate it and save that human factor for ideas, innovation, and ways you can automate more things so that you can really innovate in other places in more ways. So thank you so much for joining us today. You are helping so many people. Would you like to thank anyone in particular who has helped you through this certification and specialization journey? Yeah, I'd really like to thank, you know, the, the part of the DevNet team, Lacey, Kareem, Chuck, really just helping us get organized, really put us in touch with a lot of the folks to really help make sure that we're successful in this program and really uh, point us in the right direction on a lot of things. So again, thank you, really appreciate this and super excited on this uh, DevNet specialization, really looking forward to it. Congratulations on achieving the DevNet specialization for partners. Well done. Yep, thank you very much. Well, this has been one of my favorite parts about getting ready for DevNet Day so that we could celebrate the partners that have achieved their DevNet specialization. Um, and right, right now we're going to go to a fourth partner um, in Switzerland, NetCloud. And we did this interview with Redto and they they're the, the the most recent partner to get their devnet specialization now listen for the excitement and listen also for a little bit of that uh, competitive spirit um if you're a cisco partner and you're not looking into how you can differentiate with devnet you're going to miss out i really like this interview with reto because um he's super honest about the competitive advantage that devnet gives his company so that he can better serve customers so let's roll the video and let me know what you think now I'd like you to hear from NetCloud's Reto. You have been very eager to get through the program, the DevNet specialization for partners. The, the, the most important thing is to reduce errors and save time. That, that is what, uh, what our customers are looking for. And uh, we help them uh, with standardization, quality improvement, and reduce the uh, dependency from IT stuff. The target for uh, most of our, our customers is to, uh, to make the IT consumable and uh, position IT as a value add to achieve in the end business outcome. And uh, we help them uh, when we uh, reduce the configuration complexity with automation flows. What technology specifically are you working with and what are the pain points uh, within those areas that you see? Most of our customers, they have today a good network, compute and storage admins, but they lack when it comes to coding and uh, software development skills. And um, the, big, uh, the big topic is that, they, uh, that we find for them use cases and make 80% um, make of, uh, of the unused uh, features of the technology, uh, technology uh, alive so that they, uh, that they can um, automate the daily job and focus on adding value services. 
that's that's what we uh, what we are doing uh, when it comes to uh, to coding and software development. I like that focus on really on the customer experience, right? Uh, how do you keep your team up to date with the latest technology, as, especially of course with the certifications that are now available for DevNet? How do you stay motivated? How does your team stay up to date with all of this new technology? Yes. Um, uh, the, the certification when uh, when the DevNet certification came out, it was uh, it was a big motivation for our our uh, engineers to achieve them. So uh, and especially the DevNet 500 program was uh, was a big motivator to them for them. So to be one of the of the the first uh, around the world to get uh, the certification, and in the end of the day, it's uh, it's for them uh, to prove uh, to prove their know-how. That uh, that is uh, that is what um, what it helps. But um, to be honest, uh, it, uh, the certification uh, itself don't uh, don't help the customers. It's really what we make out of it and uh, what we are doing in the end in the uh, at the project uh, on the customer side. In the end, it's uh, it's all uh, all about uh, taking most out out of the solution we uh, we, uh, we we sell to the customers. And uh, for that, uh, we need to, uh, to to have the skills in programmability and coding. So that we uh, that we can achieve direct uh, business outcome for our uh, for our customers in the project. What advice do you have for other people who would be interested in learning more about programmability, and specifically for companies that um, either would like to start a software practice or companies that could go through DevNet specialization for partners? What is your advice? Yeah, probably it's uh, don't do it because then we are the only one in the world who can do this. But uh, but, but to be honest, <laughs> I think uh, the the most important uh, thing is uh, is to start with uh, with with, uh, with uh, practical experience. You you need uh, you need to to start uh, uh, with with the customers to um, to look for uh, for for projects. And um, and and start then to uh, to implement first first easy use cases uh, at the customers, and um, if you um, build up with this uh, the the software skills and also your know how, you can go uh, go even further. And of course, the the certification itself for the for the engineers gives gives the good know how um, so that they have the the basic skills of uh, APIs uh, in this case, especially from uh, from Cisco equipment that helps. Thank you so much for joining us today and for, you know, for sharing a lot of what gives you that competitive advantage. But in the end, you're really focused on the customers and that best customer experience. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Yeah, it's, uh, it's possibly um, we, we are doing now uh, automation since years. And in the in the past, it was uh, it was very painful when we did it with uh, command line parsing and corresponding uh, libraries. That, that, that was a hard job. But uh, now it's it's much easier as uh, most of the Cisco products uh, get uh, the right API, and uh, and that's that's uh, that's really the the, the basis uh, which which makes uh, which which makes such uh, such pro projects easy and um, and um, and uh, and good for, for for everyone. And uh, the nice thing is uh, that we see now that DevNet gets really a good status at Cisco. And the new products, and especially the certification and the new specialization, uh, just underlie this to us. Thank you so much for being such a big fan of DevNet, and we appreciate you and your team building up your skills and your software practice with us. And if I may say, congratulations on achieving the DevNet specialization for partners. Thank you very much. <laughs>